Welcome back. Uh, Ada and I are going to be talking today about personal freedom, how we, each of us, come to this sense of being essentially uh, free within our own emotional and psychological state. And uh, I, I think this is a profound subject because once um, you get some degree of mastery of your own psyche, um, then you really can be free and it can be transported into any situation. So, Anna, I, I want to ask you first, how do you do that? You're not going to say hello first? No. Hello, Anna. <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> well, first of all, I, as I'm hearing you, Nusam, I was um, taken back to this affirmation that every day in every way I'm becoming emotionally independent. And I would say that it feels that that's the aim of our spiritual path, that we find that space of freedom within that has nothing to do with what is happening out there. We are comfortable in our own skin. We feel a connection to our higher self, to our God within, that it's so fulfilling that that's enough. Mm -hmm. But you're asking me, how do I enhance that maybe, or how do I, um, especially, I would say especially when, when we are experiencing something that might not be of our preference, right? Yeah. We'd rather have it some other way, and we want to stay calm and poised through it all as, and not make our happiness or well-being dependent on that, essentially. Well, as I was telling you, how I manage my own emotions is by journaling. Uh -huh. I've been journaling now for over 30 years. It's not something that I do every day, but it's probably two, three times a week that I pull my journal out. And even though I use the journal for other reasons, but there's a lot of emotional processing. And how it, I, it goes for me is that I try to identify the emotion that is feels like it's controlling me, that I have no control over this emotion. Mm -hmm. I might be feeling hurt or sad uh, or fearful, and I start writing about why, um, describing the emotion and then why must I be feeling this way? What was it that I was expecting for it to happen? Does it mean then that my Peace of mind and well-being depends on this circumstance. No, it does not. But why? And then I start like digging deeper until I get clarity on the nature of the emotion, and then maybe identify the real cause. Because sometimes when we experience something, it's at the surface. But when we dig deeper and we go deeper, we go, oh, this is what it's really about. And then I try to apply some of the things I have learned in Unity, which mm, could be an affirmation, could be a prayer, could be asking the Divine for clarity. There are many times, and I've been doing this maybe for four or five years, where it's been working for me that I go to sleep and I ask the Holy Spirit to bring clarification through dreams. Oh. And... Uh, Many times, I would say like 90% of the time, I might get a dream that initially might not make sense, but when I come back to the journaling, I get the answer. Yeah. And once I find that like new way of keeping myself balanced and, and happy and free, then I'm like, okay, whatever it is, it is what it is, I'm okay. So that's like how I do it. That's very good. You know, I think the uh, the the use of journaling and the and writing stuff down is something I've never done, hardly yeah. ever done. And I uh, I think it's all according to style. It right. is your style, right. you know. And I, I almost can't imagine you not writing. <laughs> you know, I. <clears throat> I think I, I, it always strikes me, you know, you, you'll come in and you go, I've had a download. <laughs> and uh, you've been writing for the last uh, yeah. uh, couple of hours before you come to church. And it's yeah. like, huh, how about that? Well, I don't do that. Um, 
yeah, it's 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 different for each person. But I know I'm a writer. Uh, that's how I prepare for Sunday services. Yeah. Um, but I know. Wh what about you, Nusom? How do you? What works for you? Um, <clears throat> I, I think what uh, I've been paying attention is some of you know we did a series on heart math and I've been paying attention to that style again recently that it's been very helpful for me you know um, years ago I spent a, a decade medita meditating on the heart uh, when I would do meditation that's generally how I do it and um, and so I'm familiar with it. And essentially the way the heart math teaches you to do this, and I think it's very effective, is essentially that you, like you, you identify the, uh, the, the emotion. emotion that's happening now, whatever it is. It doesn't, and it's not like you shouldn't have it. It's just like, well, that's what you're having right now. Identify that, be very clear about it. And then begin to breathe into your own heart. And as you breathe into this part of your body and you begin to, which essentially brings your energy to this part of the body, you begin to move into what I think is the neutral place where you can make some adjustments to the way you feel. So you breathe into the heart, it brings you down in, in, into your, from being controlled by an outside emotion, you bring it down into your heart, and then uh, from here, you choose a new emotion. You choose one. And, and I think what, what is brilliant about this is that it puts it right back into the level of choice. You don't have to wait forever. You don't even have to solve the issue. You don't actually have to go do something on the outer. You just say, I don't like that emotion. I recognize it. I own it. It's not like I'm denying its existence. It's not a cheap escape it's like there it is but that's not who i want to do what i want to do now it, it's like um you were shooting free throws and you missed you go uh, just i'm not i want to hit the so you change it's not like you deny you you missed the shot you miss you made a mistake you just now come into the center choose an emotion so let's say you choose joy versus anger and then you essentially tell your heart open your heart to joy and in, in doing that, then the heart, and it may not happen like in a second, but it does happen. And what happens is then the heart then begins to flood the brain with the chemicals of joy, but also the information of joy, the heart rate of joy, the, the, all, the, all the electromagnetic experiences of joy go up to your head, your brain begins to have that experience, and then you have this virtuous cycle going on instead of a negative cycle. You have a virtuous cycle going on inside you. And that is freedom itself. When you can actually go, I'm going to feel joy. <laughs> and you do it. What a, what a powerful place to be. It's not like, um, it's coming back to the, you know, we've been talking about Epictetus, the uh, Stoic philosopher, who basically says that you have one thing that you're responsible for, one thing in your life you're absolutely responsible for, that are, you, are your choices of how you think and feel. And most people think they don't have control of them either. But with some practice and this heart math technique, I think you can prove to yourself you do have choice there. I, I'm seeing, in, in a way we agree, because we're, we're looking for uh, like a conscious way of acknowledging the feeling and then transmuting it into, into something yes. else, right? Which the uh, ultimate byproduct is the freedom we experience. But for me, Nusom, I, I really, uh, depending on, on, on the circumstance, but what I've learned from me, for myself, is that I need some processing time. And I can get to that joy, but I need some cogni cognitive process where the mind, the heart doesn't need any explanation, but the mind does many times, right? So by what I'm seeing for myself that as my mind gets the, like you say in English, the ducks in order, you see how that expression? Ducks. Ducks in order. Yeah, yeah. As I feel that, okay, I'm, I'm making sense of this, then it's like I am more receptive 
to opening up to something else and, and then transforming there. But if I'm really, if I'm really into a strong emotion, it, it's hard for me to just go, I'm going to choo choose joy. Yeah, I'm going to choose that, but I need to process this first. Processing becomes key. And the way I do it is by journaling. And, and I, know, I know there's research that says that, you know, all the health benefits of, of I, I could, I remember reading some article, uh, health benefits to journaling too. But it, uh, the point here, I think, is that we all have our ways. Yeah, and we you need do. to honor them. Yeah. So uh, coming back to the whole processing thing, you know, I, I, one of the other ways I use a yeah. process is something that Byron Katie com came up with, which was this idea of asking yourself several questions. And from there, you reduced your righteousness about your, your uh, position, right. essentially. Right. Mm -hmm. And you come to a place of at least neutrality going, maybe I don't know. And... Um, I think we can adopt, uh, as a general rule, a feeling of, eh, maybe I don't know. Um, it will help in the uh, adjustment of our emotions because, Lord knows, it's usually righteous. We're right. We, you know, this yeah. sense that I know what's going on is a big stumbling block for true clarity about what's going on. It's almost like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with you there. It's like this emotion um, has been followed by an idea, a perspective, an attitude that feels this is the only reality. And, yeah. and as such, then I get to feel this way. And what you're saying, I'm, through journaling, I process that. And what you're saying through the questioning is this is really right. It's really like breaking the ego's grip. Yeah. Exactly. That's really what we're doing. Yeah, it's like sh you almost, it almost, it, it, when you're, you're going well, <laughs> look at it, it just kind of goes, <laughs> cur, 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 right. and it falls down. It's like, ah, uh, I just had somebody, I, I, offer, I offered somebody uh, a kindness, and they wrote back an email, a, a text or something, and they said, uh, essentially not today. And I was like, whoa. Oh, okay, well, forget it. Not eight, not not today, not ever. Ha 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 ha. Uh, after a couple of hours of going, moving back to my heart, you know, over and over. Yeah. I went. Oh, okay. They just said not today. That's all they said. Right. They didn't say anything right. else. <laughs> you know. Exactly. We are the you know we are the ones creating all this drama. Because, and, and, and it's fine, I mean, we have to even forgive ourselves because sometimes that's the best we can do. It is the best we can do, at the moment. At the moment. But it's like, it's like life is like a game of basketball. You run up and down the court, you're busy doing stuff, and you shoot, and you miss. And that's what they call sin in the first place, right. is missing. Right. You just miss. Uh, well, just start over. Does that make you a bad player? No. no. It, it means you pick up the ball. I mean, I don't even think Michael Jordan shot 60%. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of missing in basketball. There's a yes. lot of missing in life. We yes. miss a lot. Yes. But it's a fun game if you can, just, if you can pick the ball back up and right. shoot again. Just keep playing. Yep, just keep playing. Just keep playing. And... Uh, and the more we're willing to play and be willing to get back up by the uh, renovation of our thoughts, like Paul would say, the more freedom we were essentially experience. And that's what we're here for. And it's great to be in that space. Yeah. Yeah. I've spent a lot of time in Righteousville, and Righteousville is far less fun than Raleigh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, join us next time. Uh, I'm sure we'll have something brilliant to say. Um, I believe next time we're going to be talking about grace. Uh, and Anna and I have both had so much grace in our lives. We're, we're kind of excited to talk about that. So I hope you'll join us. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, Unity of the Triangle channel, please do and stay connected. Blessings.